Well, what easier way to start Grand National Week could there be than with a 30-runner handicap chase on heavy ground at Fairy House? Yes, the Irish Grand National isn't quite the punting minefield that the entry race is, but it's hardly easy. It needs a great man to assess its many, many runners, and that great man is James Pyman. Um, James, it's a, it's a hell of a way to start a really difficult week's punting, mm -hmm. um, but punters and bookmakers have honed in on one horse, I suppose, in, in recent days, Sadler Storm. You can see why, prolific winner, yeah. Tony yeah. Martin trains a horse, looks to have very obvious claims. How persuasive are those claims to you? Very persuasive, in all honesty, Lee. Um, you know, it's, it's almost like the best fit for the race if you take into account all the different aspects. Yep. You've got market confidence, it's re relatively unexposed, um, should stay, will handle the ground. Yep. You know, I've won the race with Davies Ladd in yep. 2001. Um, this has traditionally been a bit of a trends race. Last 10 runnings. All, no winner over 10 stone 12. Right. Um, oh yeah, the last 10 carried 10 stone 5 or less, 10 stone 1. You know, I'm, I'm struggling to find too many negatives other than the, the, the fact that, you know, it's a big field handicap and I think this horse has only raced four or five times on the fences, so you could say it's lack of experience, but it, it, it normally goes to one of these horses that's able to take a big leap forward and, and so far this horse has been coming on a, you know, a bundle. Um, it's three starts in 2010 so far. It's improved with each start. Should be further improvement to come. Therefore, mileage off its off its present mark. And uh, in all honesty, I wouldn't put anyone off backing it at 13 to two. Right. Okay. Um, I you know I would have preferred you know being being greedy. I would prefer t to be more in the sort of you know eight nine ten to one bracket yeah. really, but just because it's a 30 runner race. So I'm not always that comfortable with siding on a horse at that price. But um, I can't really form that much of a case against it, so... No, he's, he, he does look an obvious the, one, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, have you got any reasons why you... No, not at all. No, the, 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 the stable, as you say, got a fantastic record in the race, but I, I, just, I do sometimes think with Tony Martin horses, they're priced because they're Tony Martin yeah, horses, yeah. and yet in recent seasons, his record at winning these big races maybe doesn't necessarily tally with the price his horse starts at. I think maybe sometimes the, the, the T Martin factor is over-exaggerated. I, um, I, I think you're. I think you're absolutely right. Um, but having gone through this race fairly thoroughly, I, I, I just don't see anything in the race with as as exciting a profile. So, no. and I think if it was trained by Willie Mullins, it would be even shorter than that's a fair two. point. And, and maybe the market's starting to address yeah. Martin's lack of relative lack yeah, of in recent seasons. In recent seasons. So. Yeah, I, 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 I think you do make a very good point. And in, in, in all honesty, in the last couple of seasons, usually if I see a Tony Martin runner, I actually ignore it because yeah. I think it's going to be too short. Yeah. But I don't think you can ignore Sadler's Storm. Well, one point you did make there, again, I think it's really relevant too, mm. is that it's a race in which horses traditionally take a, a big leap forward. Um, and I suppose it, it, it's more like the Scottish National than the Grand National in the sense that you very often get a real strong number of novices um, in there with real fighting chances. And that's the case again, isn't it? Sadler Storm's yeah. a novice, um, Telenor, Jim Draper trained novice, Alpha Ridge, a smart novice. Lots of real young, unexposed chasers in there. Yeah, I, I think it's perceived as being less of a brutal race, rightly so, than the, than the, than the Aintree National, isn't it? And, you know, therefore, it's, it's, a, more, it's a conventional chase, isn't it? Yeah. You know, they're, they're jumping regulation fences. And I, therefore, I think more trainers are willing to take the plunge. Um, but as a result, you do get a lot of very interesting uh, horses that are, are often bred or perceived to improve or have been trained to improve through the step up in distance. Um, and I, I think you're right. I think, you know, I mean, the two interesting ones, I think, from a handicapping perspective are uh, Alpha Ridge and What You Think, um, be purely because they're 150 odd horses over hurdles that yeah. are maybe starting to get the hang of things over fences. They look like. Horses that have possibly been plotted up for this race. More Alpha Ridge, he's nine to one though. And what you, what you think is twenty five to one, and, yeah. and actually has got a very similar profile to Alpha Ridge. Um, so of those, you know, of those types, I probably would marginally lean towards Alpha Ridge, but I think he is a horse that is is the right price because, you know, that obviously the concern about lightly raced horses over fences is 
they're open to improvement, but the concern is the jumping. Yeah. And I really think Alperich hasn't looked a natural at the fences, which is why I, yeah. I would pass him over at nine to one. And Ferrihouse does take some jumping. It does take some jumping. Yeah. Particularly the straight, you those three fences quite yeah, close together yeah. when horses come under pressure. Um, we sh we can't look at a race like this and not mention Willie Mullins. Never mm. actually won an Irish National. Um, but going in there this season with a, a strong challenge numerically. Um, are you surprised that Ruby's not riding Ballytrim and has gone with Equus Maximus instead? Um, I'm, I'm actually not that surprised, purely because of Walsh's comments after riding Ballytrim. I, I think when Ballytrim won um, a 22k race last May, he said that Bazaar, he said Ballytrim was the first horse beat. Okay. And he stayed on. I, I, I think Walsh often likes to sit on these, these sort of stronger travelling yeah. types. I think they suit his riding style more. Yeah. Bally Trim's going to need a bit of shoving. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how much ability he's got. The worry I've got about Bally Trim, he doesn't look as though he's been plotted for this race because I think he would have got in this race bef off, the, off the mark he had before winning last time. Right. He, he would have got in at, you know, at the, the foot of the weights yeah. around the 10 1, 10 2. Bracket. Instead, he's won a race last time, I think an eight grand chase last time. He's gone up 10 odd pounds. Yeah. He's made his life harder. And I just can't really work out why they would do that if they really wanted to win the Irish National with him. Um, Equus Maximus looks like more of a plot in terms of very little form going in, but we know he's got loads of talent. I mean, this horse beat Tranquil Sea by four lengths and yeah. punches down in May in a handicap. I think he was only getting five pounds off Tranquil Sea. Yeah. Now, you know, it, it, I don't know what mark he's running off, but he, he's he's undoubtedly well handicapped. Um, perhaps you know a little high in the market from a trends perspective, a little high in the weights from a trends perspective of eleven stone two. But one four but three. I don't think that will stop it if yeah. if this has always been the plan. I think we're only going to find out if this has always been the plan on the day if there's a big plunge for him. And of course, worth bearing in mind too that it was around now last season that Willie Mullins stable. I mean, they're in form all last season, but they really hit a rich yeah, vein of form, did. and particularly at Punchestown thereafter, just was, they were winning everything. So, you, you, so you'd have to respect those. British Challenge, we, we've got a good record in the race in recent yeah. seasons, but pretty weak numerically this year. But I've got to say, one I, I do quite fancy, and tell me I'm wrong, um, Officier de Reserve for Venetia Williams mm. um, was previously a pretty smart stain chaser for Paul Nichols, um, fourth in the Welsh National, was going well in a similarly big Irish handicap chase when was carried out the contest. Was dropped in the weight since, now with Venetia Williams. And I thought ran a pretty eye-catching race in the William Hill Trophy at Cheltenham, where we're staying on. It'd be all the better for that. It's definitely going to, would have come on for that contest. Um, and I just thought he's handicapped to run a decent race off a low weight. Well, I mean, it definitely fits this trend of British success. Um, I, I don't know. I just wonder where he's almost got a few too many miles on the clock. Probably not in terms of chase starts but no. that he's been changing hands and you know they've been fiddling around with trips and things I'm also not entirely convinced Venetia Williams is in you know really really red hot form um, I, I, the horses I have tended to win this have been you know novices that have been very lightly raced and progressive niche yeah. market been an example last season Butler's cabin yeah uh, I don't really see him with that profile but I, I honestly don't think this is a, a vintage running of the Irish National, so maybe it's not going to be a trend source. So I wouldn't put you off that. Um, you know, Venetia Williams is clearly a very talented trainer. Her horses, I think, always tend to want plenty of juice in the ground. Yeah. I think officiate the reserve will be suited by the conditions of the race. Um, but, I mean, could hand on heart you say this has been the plan for the horse? And normally, I think these races are won by horses that have been aimed okay. for those targets. I'm very much a strong believer of that. Okay. Um, which is why the one I like... Go on, give us a selection. Yet. We've mentioned a third of the field, but not yours yet. Yeah, it is um, Martin Brazil's Ambo Ambobo, who mm -hmm. in this race last year was making a big move uh, until unseating, unfortunately unseating, six out. Um, but subsequently went on to prove that he was going to run a huge race because he went to Punchestowns. He finished in front of... He beat Vic Venturi and he beat yeah. Arbor Supreme. Good form. Now, we've got Vic Venturi mm -hmm. and, Bo and Arbor Supreme. Arbor Supreme recently being punted for the Grand yeah. National. Those horses are in the, what, top 10 in the betting for that yeah. race. Yeah, yeah. Um, this horse has been, you know, given the traditional national build-up, mm -hmm. kept over hurdles to preserve the mark. Now, Brazil has say, said that, that Bobo doesn't like to carry big weights. 
But and by the way, won the race at Punches Downs off ten stone thirteen and runs here from Neville yeah. Stone. Yeah. So we we should be okay there. Although it doesn't fit in with the the, the the you know the profile of winners being under ten stone twelve. But it's not far off. No. So uh, twenty five to one for a horse that's you know been trained all season for the race. I think is is is, is fair enough. So that's where my money will be going. Um, but I just want to finally mention one other Go because on. there's a little bit of the Butler's Cabins about it. Right. I remember Butler's Cabin before he won the, the four miler at Cheltenham. There was p- people saying the horse wouldn't stay. Yep. He'd been running over 2 4. Mm-hmm. JP McManus, John Joe, and he was yep. trained. Um, proved everybody wrong at 33 to 1. This Dancing Tornado is a hell of a traveller, strong travelling, very talented horse. Um, he's the type to be looking as though he's going seriously well in running under McCoy, and um, he's 25 to 1. I think, you know, it, it, it's the sort of horse that could trade appreciably shorter, given his connections. Okay. It might get punted on the day. Um, so he's one to look for in the market. So look out for Dancing Tornado, yeah. but you reckon that Ambobo is the one to I win the Irish Ambobo is going to give us a really good run for our money. OK, so we like the favourite. Can't put you off the favourite Saddler Storm, but equally at bigger prices. Mr Pyman reckons that Ambobo can win the Irish National, I like officiate de reserve, but he's better than me.